Okay, Blues TV is here with Aidy Mycroft, uh, Blues coach. Aidy, can you tell us a bit about your role in the coaching setup this season? Um, yes, I was um, um, invited to, to come down to the club by by Andy. Um, that was and Andy Eaklin initially, um, who was looking to, to come and coach with the club. Uh, he had asked me if I'd be interested. Um, I was then obviously contacted by um, the other Andy, the one that you're all aware of mm -hmm. and all know very, very well. Um, and then I came down, had a chat with Andy, and um, there was a bit of concern initially in regard to the, the distance uh, in which I'm coming from. So I, I live in Doncaster, but I actually work in Nottingham. Um, so obviously there's a, quite a long mm -hmm. drive there for me. Um, and we basically said we'd see how it goes. Um, and um, it seems to be going okay at the moment. Uh, hopefully, as long as the weather doesn't change things and roadworks on the roads don't change, then I'm, I'm enjoying the, the challenges so far. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about your background in rugby? I know you've been involved in the army rugby team. Yeah, uh, primarily sevens. Um, and um, I was head coach of the uh, Royal Logistic Corps, um, who were um, the uh, army corps champions uh, whilst I was head coach. Um, and um, obviously travelled the world with the Army Sevens uh, with Andy Icklin, which was a tremendous experience, um, and um, coached numerous uh, civilian clubs as well, um, level three coach, and um, I also um, am a uh, trainer for uh, the RFU uh, on level one and level two coaching courses. Okay, great. So how's training been going then so far? Um, it's been it's been good. Um, numbers have been uh, tremendous. Um, some extremely good, young, enthusiastic young men, um, and uh, it, it's um, it's very nice to to be working with such enthusiastic um, lads that really do want to achieve something uh, with their rugby and to a certain degree, obviously, with their lives. Um, the probably the biggest challenge, to be truthful, is not necessarily developing their their skill level, which is a, a challenge. Um, but actually keep them all enthused because obviously only 15 can play and um, prime example at the moment we're averaging um, 30 odd plus forwards mm -hmm. turning up um, and um, so it's a case of keeping them enthused um, and um, if you like developing that team team Newbury uh, mentality and allowing the, the lads to, to play off one another and and use that friendly banter and competition off their mates, if you like, because they are actually competing with their friends in a lot of cases. Okay. Um, so looking forward to the new season, we're just one week away now. What are you hoping to see the squad achieve? It's a difficult one. Um, I think, to be truthful, bearing in mind that the last two years that the club have had um, and the transformation from, to a certain degree, um, total professionalness in, in most cases, um, to coming back down to just young, enthusiastic, amateur young men that um, are open to launch, in some cases, their rugby careers from, from Newbury. Um, as far as Newbury is concerned, really just consolidation um, and um, ensure that um, there's no further slides. I'm sure you understand what I mean by that one. I do. <laughs> okay, so you're optimistic. Uh, yeah, the, the, the young lads that we've got are, are more than capable of of producing what they need to produce to, to do well in this league. Okay, Andy, if we can look back at last weekend's games. Um, first of all, we had a very tough match against a very experienced Bath team on Saturday. How do you think the squad got on? Uh, well, obviously 81-0 is not something that we're going to be... Um, hoping happens every every week. Um, we arranged the, the the fixture originally on the proviso that it was going to be an academy side, and we felt that would probably be a good test for our, our young team. Um, but obviously things got out of um, Frank's hand, who's the academy manager. And before we knew it, we were playing the best part of a, a Premiership side, certainly a, a side that would compete very well in the Championship. Uh, and so it made for a very very tough day, um, both in defence and attack. Um, but I couldn't really fault the application of the guys. When they did get the ball, they tried to put something together, uh, but the sheer physical um, intensity of, of defence meant that time they had on the ball, time they had to make decisions, was, was, 
was so much small, shorter than they're, they're used to, and certainly shorter than they're going to find this season. Uh, and when they find that they didn't have the ball, decision making in defence was was also short, uh, and the and the the number of ways of attack and the, uh, clearly the, the physical size of these guys. But at no stage did, did did we just sort of capitulate and allow them to run through. We made them work hard for, the, for their tries. And towards the end of the second half, uh, yes, bodies were starting to get tired and there's a few walking wounded. So um, all we've really asked of them is, is to apply themselves time and time again. And, and, and by doing that, they, they will achieve their goals. But there's no way they're going to meet a side that good this season. Um, and as long as they realise that and realise that four periods of the game they did um, manage to, to put some of their own passages of play together uh, take out of it those positives take out the fact they played at a premiership ground in front of a fairly big side uh, sorry, sizable crowd um, enjoy that bit of it um, certainly be disappointed that you know, they scored 81 points and we didn't score um, but try to take the positives out of it really OK, and we had a win for the second team against the Stags at home as well. Yeah, well, that was obviously the plus at the end of the day. Um, and it was nice that the, the, the boys that were down at Bath were uh, all smiles when they heard that result come through. And that's what I want to happen each week, to be honest. Um, it was the first time that we had the opportunity to put two teams out. It wasn't easy getting that second team. It's this time of year when people are on holiday and with a few injuries, it meant that we were right down on the bare bones for that side. Um, and it meant that, that forwards are playing out in the backs. Uh, and to make it really old fashioned, um, we ended up with two physios here due to a communication breakdown. So one of them put his boots on play for the team. Um, so that was great. That was, that, that's old school rugby, really. Have boots, we'll play. Um, and they and they played played well and, and beat the Stags and, and obviously we talked about that being one of the more local derbies you can get and it was good that we came away with, with a win there. Lose TV is here with Jack Avery, who has just been announced as Newbury's club captain for this season. Congratulations, Jack! How does it feel to be named as club captain? You know, it's uh, it's great actually. It's a big privilege for me, and I've got uh, stepping into some big shoes. That's big names of previously being a captain, so um, I'm excited and yeah, really looking forward to it. Okay, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself? So, what do you do when you're not playing rugby? I'm a student at Oxford Brooks University, um, which what is, are you studying? is studying sports coaching, which is excellent, good fun. It's a perfect course for myself. Not not too many essays involved. <laughs> um, and then when I'm not at university, I'm up here at Newbury training, and that's, that's about it, really. Okay. So um, for people that don't know, what does the role of captain involve on and off the pitch? Uh, I'll take on the pitch first. Um, on the pitch, it's more a case of keeping your sort of bearings about the team it's mostly about the team, um, making sure that everyone's doing what they should be doing, um, keeping keeping everyone sort of in line, making sure I work through the ref, um, and keeping the relationship between the or t between Newbury and the referee good. And off the pitch, it's setting an example. I'd I'd, I'd say most the sort of at foremost is setting an example, um, and leading the way really, training hard making sure that everyone's happy and knowing what they should be doing. And that's really it. Okay. So the new season is nearly upon us. What are you looking forward to most? Mostly, I think it's going to be a very exciting season, this season. I think we've got, certainly have showed in the sort of three or four pre-season games we've played, that we've got a lot of talent in, in the squad and I know a lot of pundits certainly have been sort of playing us down and I think it's really exciting for us as a squad and as a team that that they're doing that really because we've got you know we've got everything to play for i think it's going to be a really yeah exciting year for uh, newbury blues <laughs>